I wish we had new topics to talk about, but every time it comes back to Bangalore, infrastructure, uh, the traffic, and so on and so forth. This was the garden city, the retiree's paradise. Obviously, it's grown phenomenally in the last 20, 30 years, but the fallout of that also we're seeing every day. Uh, the point is, where did the story go wrong, and how can we fix it? You know, Zaka, we must first understand what Bangalore is. Bangalore is the richest city in India with a per capita income of $11,000. India's per capita income is $2,300. Bangalore has 23 lakh people working in technology, much more than Silicon Valley. Mm -hmm. It has 35,000 IT companies. Two and a half lakh to three lakh tech P techies get jobs in Bangalore every year. Bangalore possibly pays the second or third highest quantum of income tax in this country third highest quantum of banking deposits, fourth highest quantum of bank lending. Mm. It will have an export of something like $80 billion this year, possibly, in software services. 15,000 startups, 45 plus, uh, you know, unicorns. So it is an extraordinary city with 100,000 PhDs sitting here. It is a science capital, technology capital, biotech capital, aer aerospace capital, electronic capital, electrical capital, you name it, it is here. This is the future of this country. Now, what is wrong with Bangalore? What is wrong with Bangalore is the management capacity of Bangalore has not kept pace with the wealth of Bangalore. We have one crore vehicles in Bangalore, 65 lakhs, two wheelers, 25 lakh, four wheelers, and the balance. Our roads are not developed. Our metro is mismanaged. It's three years behind schedule. Delhi has got 410 kilometers of metro. We got some 52 or 55 is going to go to 75 or 80, three or four years behind schedule. There is mismanagement of the city. We have a city corporation which is, uh, bank, which is bankrupt because they're not able to collect taxes, where we had 200 uh, ward councillors, out of which 108 were real estate brokers, and they're very corrupt. Each one has taken that ward and said, it's my domain, so whatever happens, I have to get money. We have MLAs, many of them who try to extort money, and the government is helpless. And we wanted a mayor for Bangalore, and the government will never have a mayor, because if you have a mayor for Bangalore, the mayor will become the most powerful person here. We are maybe 55-60% of Karnataka GDP, 55-60% of Karnataka taxes. All politicians from all over Karnataka come and stay here. We heard DK. Yeah. I mean, DK is an extraordinary individual. I mean, his story is an extraordinary story. But you know, you must see what he has done in the last 25 years. Uh, very good thing in his constituency, but you must see his net worth is in very interesting. So everybody becomes rich in this place. And what do we get? Nothing. Because you know why? Ravi will tell you, out of 226 seats, we got 28, Ravi. We are 16% of the population. There has been no delimitation for many areas. So mm -hmm. politicians don't care about Mangalore. Now, we spoke about uh, 7,200 crores being spent on portals in the last three yeah, years. Yeah. I remember going to Dharam Singh, was CM, and complaining to my portals. You know what he told me? He told us, I mean, they, you know, what do you do with this? It's badly managed. But the hope is, just know we had an extraordinary officer called Dr. Salim, yeah, who was a yeah. DGP with the police. He's improved bank traffic by 20% in just one month. Yeah. And we have, uh, you know, the Tushar uh, Giri Singh as a commissioner. He is uh, huh? a uh, Girinath as commissioner. He has improved Bangalore's roads. Some of the old projects have been done. Bangalore is badly managed. We need improvement in governance. And we have extraordinary people like him who have d written reports about governance for Bangalore, given suggestions for the last 20 years, which has been accepted by the government, but not implemented. So, so 